Hi, good morning everyone. It's uh, 11.15 already, so uh, we shall start the webinar. Welcome to our first webinar for this year. Uh, we'll have four things to go through for today, uh, which you can see on the screen. So let's start now. This uh, disclaimer, please read it. So we'll start with Comfort Delgro. We published a report uh, last week. Uh, the title of the report is Earnings to Bottom Out in FY17. So in that report, um, we described uh, why we think uh, that earnings will bottom for FY17. Uh, we have isolated a few of the so-called big ticket items, uh, which directionally we forecast uh, whether it's going higher or lower. And we have uh, provided our uh, workings and estimates in the report, uh, uh, sorry, our assumptions in the report, and you can go through um, the assumptions and the estimates. So start off with uh, the bus. Uh, for FY18, uh, rec reven recognition of revenue will be higher. Uh, first comes, first this comes from the service quality incentive for bus services. Uh, this was for the bus services that was performed under the new uh, bus contracting model which started in September 2016. So this is something like a, a bonus um, for service quality which has not been recognized. Uh, so based on our estimates, uh, this would add an additional uh, 9 million of a uh, pet me for ComfortDelGro. Next is the takeover of the Salita bus package. This should happen sometime in the first quarter of uh, this year. And for this, um, we estimate it will add uh, 4.2 million to PetMe as well, additional PetMe. Next is the rail. So rail has always, uh, rail for downtown line specifically uh, has been loss making since its inception. Uh, however, in the last quarter of this, of FY17, uh, downtown line 3 commenced operations. So that should uh, start to narrow the losses for downtown line. For FY18, uh, we still forecast that it will uh, record a loss. FY19 as well, still a loss. But the losses are starting to will start to narrow, and uh, actually, we based on our forecast, um, third quarter of FY19 should start to break even. But overall, on the full year basis, FY19 still lost. Uh, to reiterate, FY18 also will still be lost. Uh, however, uh, based on our estimates, the loss in FY18 will narrow by about 70% compared to FY17 and that would uh, bring uh, PetMe higher by about 19 million. Lastly for taxi, uh, so in the report we also have a chart to show the population uh, growth for taxi and rental cars. So we see that the growth rate for rental cars has already uh, stagnated and start, started to uh, moderate downwards already. So what we are looking out for is um, some equilibrium between the two different population uh, growth, uh, two equilibrium in the two populations uh, being taxi and rental cars and uh, that should signal a bottom, bottoming in the contraction for the taxi population. Uh, the other positive thing for taxi is that uh, the tie-up with Lion City rentals, uh, that should be a near-term positive for now because Lion City rentals is uh, profitable. Uh, unlike the main platform app, which uh, is loss-making, so in our assumptions uh, for Singapore taxi business, we still assume a fleet contraction uh, as well as a margin compression as well. So based on our uh, assumptions, uh, we estimate PetMe to be lower, about 13 million. So based on all these uh, big, big ticket items, if you uh, add them up together, you can see that uh, there is a good chance for Pat me to be higher year on year in FY18 compared to FY17. 
Also, we have not made any changes to our forecast uh, for the Comfort Delgro and Uber partnership. That's uh, because it's still pending the outcome of uh, public consultation from the uh, Competition Commission of Singapore. So, in conclusion, we maintain buy for Comfort Delgro and um, our target price also is unchanged since the previous report which is the strategy report. So target price is unchanged at 263. We also uh, have maintained the same dividend level of uh, 10.3 cents. That's the same as FY16. Uh, ComfortDelgo's balance sheet is still in a net cash position and first nine months of FY17, the uh, free cash flow has actually improved uh, year on year. That's mainly because uh, they have not been uh, incurring KPEX to um, in, they have not been incurring KPEX for taxis so uh, very likely that uh, dividend level can be maintained uh, and that will give you about 5% uh, yield um, full year 5% yield uh, based on the last close price on Friday at uh, $2.04 uh, next, we move on to the banking sec sector by Jeremy. Uh, good morning. Okay, so um, here's the 2018 um, strategy. But first, we have a review of what happened um, in 2017. So, um, in the, at the beginning of 2017, we did see that the uh, Singapore banking stocks have started to uh, pick up. Um, however, the if you look at the macro numbers, overlay that with the macro numbers, we see that the PMI, uh, the manufacturing PMI was picking up only um, because... Um, because of the uh, electronics, uh, but the business expectations um, was actually quite uh, still remain subdued uh, during that period of time. Then the most of the loans growth was led by the real estate uh, related loans. Real estate related loans um, because most of the um, the banks were clamoring for debt. It is the single highest quality uh, 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 on that uh, highest quality assets on the balance sheet. And uh, at that time, also we, we know that the um, there was uh, trouble with the offshore oil and gas assets. So it created the um, com uh, intense competition for the residential mortgage loans. And uh, but loans growth had appeared to be better because it started off as uh, it uh, rebounded from a weaker base effect from the first half of uh, 2000 uh, of six, uh, 2016. Nonetheless, net interest margins continued to be weak. The second half was more exciting as we saw a broad based pickup of business expect expectations as the um, economic growth seems seems to be more sustainable. Um, and then, of course, we saw that the third quarter 17 GDP growth in Hong Kong and Singapore beat expectations uh, in October. And uh, the synchronous pickup in the economic activity across the globe continued to support the uh, domestic business loans. So th in this um, portion, we see that the loans and uh, loans volume and rates um, uh, are rising, which implies a firmer pass-through of the high interest rates. Uh, the only downside is that the offshore oil and gas uh, loans quality continued to linger, but we did see that uh, DBS had uh, done a major cleanup. So in the fourth quarter, we may see uh, similar actions from the other two banks. On the 2018 outlook, we will continue to see net interest margins rise on the favorable loan and volume dynamics, and um, we, will we will see that the net interest margins probably ex will expand to 1.8 to 1.9%. And um, as we saw towards the end of 2017, that the cyber and high rates have risen uh, quite quickly, playing catch up with the Fed. 
And 60% to 70% of the Singapore Bank's loans books are based in Hong Kong and Singapore. So we will see that um, the pass-through coming in more strongly in, the first, in, um, in this year. The loans demand will also be more broad-based as um, the banks will be able to focus more on the bespoke lending rather than clamor for more um, housing mortgage loans. And we'll also be seeing more. Uh, we'll also be seeing better um, operating leverage and lower cost to income ratio because of the digital capabilities um, moving into this upcycle. The oil and gas problems will definitely take a back, uh, back seat uh, because uh, we will see that there's better utilization in the semi-submersibles and the jackups, and also uh, we. In, in the month of um, December, we did see a bottoming out of the uh, day rates. So um, hopefully that will actually be, that will continue to improve into this year. And the oil price uh, looks sustainable at $60 per barrel. So in all, we expect the net interest income growth to be double digit percentage points compared to the low single digits in 2016 and first half of 17. And uh, PECME growth is expected to be dou uh, high double digit in the teens. Um, DBS could be higher because of the uh, lower base effect that we, we see in 2017. Uh, recall that um, we had the, the balance sheet cleanup in the third quarter. <clears throat> So here is the overlay of the share price performance of the financial stocks versus the uh, over um, with the um, benchmark rates of Cybor and the Fed funds target rate. So we see that not all the time uh, the financial stocks will move in tandem with rising rates because that would be dependent on uh, what the economic um, situation is at the time. So it's, it's very important and to pay attention to um, the developments in order to better uh, trade the financial stocks. So uh, here, the first part, the third quarter of 15, fourth quarter of 15, uh, towards the early part of uh, 2016, we see that the cyborg has moved up, but the bank stocks have been coming down quite severely. That is because of the travails in the Chinese capital markets as well as the collapsing oil price. So it's only in the, in the first quarter of 16 we begin to see that uh, the results coming in from the offshore oil and gas companies, they have been bad. And there, uh, uh, event, uh, there, there, and there, there was uh, impact, um, immediate impact to the balance sheet of the, of the banks. So today uh, what we are seeing is that um, uh, the, the rates are rising but it, it is over, 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 overlaid with a very positive um, sentiment coming in and also the stronger economic growth. And therefore, you are seeing that there's a very nice rise in the share prices. Here's the consensus estimates. Um, generally, our, our estimates are higher than consensus, um, particularly uh, because we expect uh, the, um, the, interest, the net interest margins to be about 10 base, basis points higher than the, the street estimates and also lower uh, allowances um, for FY18. And here are some of the ch uh, charts that um, I've put in that would show what I've described earlier. So for Hong Kong um, uh, system loans, it looks set to continue a strong double digit percentage growth in high teens. Uh, November's system loans fell 3% month of month, but that is uh, because of the IPO loans of about uh, 379 billion Hong Kong dollars that are straddling at the end of October. Uh, excluding that, the November growth uh, would be about 1% and that is being led by strong residential sales, uh, strong residential mortgage loans. And here is the Cyborg chart and the Highball chart. We see that Cyborg has uh, moved up sharply in December and uh, Highball is continuing that uptrend. Um, the our channel checks show that the cyborg packed mortgage loans generally inc increased 10 basis points in December following uh, system loans. It looks set to continue a strong double digit cyborg growth in high teens. And uh, looks at the end of the month, uh, December, we uh, saw that to pack uh, to 25 basis points. So we will uh, see that corresponding increase in the uh, cyborg packed mortgage loans uh, relatively quickly in January. Uh, in Hong Kong, um, 
Despite the high high ball, the Hong Kong mortgage loans applications in November increased 8.7% month of month and the ratio of the mortgage loans priced if, with reference to high ball um, continues to be high at 92.4%. So we will um, definitely see that the rising high ball would uh, be passed through um, to these uh, this mortgage loans and therefore you will benefit the net interest margins for the Singapore banks. And for the offshore Oil and gas uh, assets, it looks, um, it continue to look healthy. We can see that the utilization has uh, rebounded for the semi-submissibles. Uh, jackups, it continues to trend at a healthy range, uh, uh, about close to uh, 70%. More importantly is that the day rates um, have appeared to rebound at, uh, during November, uh, during uh, November, December period. So um, this is one of the, the, the few green shoots that we, we are seeing and hopefully that will maintain and if that continues, we will definitely be quite certain the, um, asset, the asset quality will not further deteriorate. And finally, the um, FTSE Straits Times Financials has, uh, this, has returned 11.13% in the three months period from October to January. And despite that, the price to book is still sitting comfortably between 1.1 uh, to 1.2 times. And this is the valuation we consider as un, uh, undemanding, especially for the fact that uh, we expect the Singapore banks to easily achieve an ROE higher than 10% in FY18. So in all, we have a target price of DBS at $29.30, OCBC 13.48 and UOB 25.22. Thank you. And next we have the Philip 20 uh, by Jeremy. Good morning everyone, uh, Jeremy speaking here. So uh, I'll be going through the December performance for the Philip 20 portfolio as well as uh, a review of the STI and what we see moving forward in 2018 for the STI as well. So before diving into the portfolio performance, uh, let's just take a look at the STI uh, for what happened in actually December as well as the whole of 2017 last year. So December being a season, festive season period, uh, Obviously, uh, liquidity will just dry up uh, as well as uh, movement-wise. So what we see in December for the SDI is uh, the SDI actually retreated 0.86% uh, in December. But uh, with the benefit of hindsight right now, with one week already in uh, to 2018, we have seen that uh, there's actually a strong recovery since December. So you can see money actually flooded back into the market again, and we have totally erased all the losses that we have seen in December and right now actually making another new 52-week high uh, with just one week of trading into 2018. So just a main summary from what we see moving forward uh, and what happened in the last month of uh, 2017. Uh, there's actually strong support of the 20 and 60-day moving average, uh, which is the red and blue line in the chart over here. Uh, and what we have seen is uh, previously in the previous month uh, review that we did, we actually uh, emphasized on this key resistance area of 3, 4, 5, 7 uh, level. Uh, what happened was in the month of November and December, you can see this 3, 4, 5, 7 resistance area sort of uh, uh, come into play to sort of uh, cap the upside. But since then, we can see that uh, the support of the 20 and 60 day moving average in the last week of December actually propelled price higher to actually break above this 3, 4, 5, 7 resistance area, which is a pretty bullish sign uh, moving forward. So what we see right now with the 3, 4, 5, 7 resistance area being breached to the upside, uh, the next target wise for the bulls are actually the 2015 high of 3, 5, 4, 9 points. And ultimately once uh, we clear this level, we should be targeting the psychological mark of 3,600. And for 2018 wise, we are actually targeting the all time high for the STI, which is around 3,906 points. That was the high that was being formed uh, during the subprime period uh, in October of 2007. So that is the outlook that we have for the STI at least in 2018. Uh, and right now I'll just briefly go through the performance of the STI uh, on a long-term basis, uh, more so in what happened in 2017. So here's the STI on the daily time frame chart. And what we've seen is uh, back in 2017, somewhere around in January, that was when this sort of uptrend kick-started uh, and move into gear. 
and this resistance area of 2964 sort of uh, was the range high during the whole period of 2016 more like Q3 and Q4 and ultimately once the STI broke above this uh, 2964 resistance area you can see uh, it sort of uh, moved into momentum where this uptrend uh, kick started and moved higher so what we've seen since then at least from the start of 2017 January period is you can see the red line which is the 20 day moving average as well as the blue line 60 day moving average has been propelling this uptrend uh, on this upper trajectory and one rule of thumb for us to sort of uh, spot the uptrend is uh, for price to actually form a series of higher highs demarcated by HH over here as well as a series of higher lows uh, demarcated by HL over here so you can see since uh, January of 2017 uh, the uptrend has been moving pretty nicely with this series of higher highs and higher lows uh, being established within the chart and you can see uh, every correction that comes into play gets uh, reversed by the 20 and 60 day moving average and hence at the same time the higher low point is uh, being formed uh, at around the 20 or 60 day moving average so in terms of uptrending motion wise you can see the STI has been moving pretty nicely in this stair stepping motion uh, making a series of higher highs and higher lows with the help of the 20 and 60 day moving average actually uh, reversing the correction or pullback uh, the only exception that uh, failed to sort of uh, hold the 20 and 60 day moving average is during the September period uh, of 2017. So this was the period where the 20 and 60 day moving average failed to actually hold the uptrend intact and the STI actually fell briefly below it. But nonetheless the uptrend was strong enough to be propped up by the newly formed uh, support area over here that was around 3200 points. So you can see after which we formed another new higher low point around this area by the uptrend we started and since then we have seen three more rejections around the 20 and 60 day moving average uh, more so in November and December and just to place your attention on the most recent rejection over here in the last week of December you can see the highlighted area over here uh, what I want to put out across over here is this 3370 points which is the low that was formed in the last week of December uh, might actually be the next higher low point within this particular uptrend so uh, with the benefit of hindsight, we believe that this 3370 points uh, right now is the higher low point and for this particular uplink, uh, we should be targeting the, this 3547 high followed by 3600 uh, psychological level and again ultimately like I mentioned, uh, the long term target at least for 2018 for the STI is the all time high of 3900 points. So all in all in summary, outlook for STI at least technically on the daily time frame you're expecting the STI to continue to move in this upward uh, trajectory and but we do not expect you to go up vertically so you should continue to move in this test stepping motion whereby it forms a series of higher highs and higher lows uh, where the higher lows are being sort of uh, held up and supported by the 20 and 60 day moving average and then moving on to the performance of the Philip 20 portfolio so for the month of December we uh, closed out two positions UMS was uh, closed out at uh, 98 and a half cents uh, with a profit of 23 uh, percent and unfortunately uh, Hanwell actually uh, hit this stop loss uh, resulting in a 14.4 percent loss in terms of new entry wise uh, we had four new entries for the month of December uh, even in the midst of a uh, sluggish price action on the STI so here are the four respective trades uh, we had Yoma, Wing Tai, Chip Eng Seng and China Aviation uh, entered into the Philip 20 portfolio uh, with this respective entry price as well as stop loss and this is the current performance as of uh, last week 4 January uh, for more information behind the rationale why we took uh, these four trades uh, you can actually refer to uh, our report that is being published on uh, poems as well uh, as stocksbnb.com and in terms of the money performance so here's the money performance of the Philip 20 portfolio since uh, May and December we actually gained a marginal uh, upside of 0.3% uh, as opposed to the STI of uh, negative 0.9% and in terms of total return wise since May inception uh, as of December we are making 5.24% uh, as compared to 7.16% uh, for the STI in a way still uh, underperforming but mainly the reason for this underperformance was uh, what happened in November whereby the momentum stocks actually uh, came off its uh, high so prior to November we are actually doing fine until the momentum stocks actually uh, fell off slightly so right now we are still playing catch up uh, moving forward we continue to monitor the progress of uh, the Philip 20 portfolio 
And in terms of watch list wise, so here's the list of stocks that we are currently uh, uh, eyeing. So most of the stocks that you see over here are upward trending kind of stocks. And what we want to capture over here is to catch the dips and to reposition ourselves back into the uptrend that has been established for all these counters over here. So continue to watch this space over here for any uh, potential trades. And last but not least, in terms of the current picks within our Philip 20 portfolio, so this is as of last week, 4th Jan, uh, the snapshot uh, of our open position. So as of last week, uh, we have a total of 19 trades. Uh, we need a Philip 20 portfolio, uh, meaning there's only one more free space within this uh, portfolio for new entries. So we we'll continue to watch this space moving forward, and hopefully 2018 will be a good year uh, together in line with the STI. Yeah, and with that, uh, I'll pass the rest of the time to Siding to talk about uh, the U.S. side of things. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Siding here. Uh, we'll just touch a few um, topics on S&P, uh, particularly on evaluation and uh, our views of uh, where the S&P 500 uh, is right now and uh, how, how do we view it. As the title itself states, we are not hard negative yet. Uh, that doesn't mean that we are actually positive on uh, S&P. Uh, let us go a little bit more into the details here. So um, S&P we all know is overvalued, overbought and uh, over bullish at this point of time. We all know that uh, valuation wise by some traditional uh, matrices looking at forward PE, price to book ratio and as well as EV over EBITDA is well over one stigma of the 10-year uh, average. Um, you could see as price continues to uh, accelerate uh, upwards, um, valuation will only get more, and, uh, more, more pricey and more expensive. Another way of looking at the uh, valuation is actually looking at the uh, Robert Schilling uh, PE, which is the cyclically adjusted uh, price, uh, price to earnings ratio. Um, this gives us a, a more uh, smooth out uh, of the earnings over a period of 10 years and you can see right now we are also way above the high of 2008 uh, but we are still below the uh, dot com whereby uh, the valuation was much much higher uh, above the uh, 40 times. So uh, with, with this um, we're trying to uh, look at uh, the valuation of S&P and uh, to, to see where it will go in the next, at least in the year of 2018. What we do realize is that valuation is not always a good market timer. In fact, it was never a good market timer. Uh, the hysteric of the overstretched market can last longer than we expect. Uh, but however, there's other ways that we can measure uh, market to let us know if there's any uh, early indications of uh, mar market weakness within within the S&P 500. So, just to name a few of these this, this that we'll go through here, uh, the cumulative uh, advisor decliner, the number of companies above the 200-day moving average, as well as the net numbers of companies hitting 52 weeks high when the index is, itself is at 52 weeks high. Um, and we'll talk a little bit on the consumer sentiment as well as the uh, consumer confidence. So what is this? Uh, uh, if you guys still don't know what is this, uh, cumulative uh, advisor uh, advisor decliner uh, chart, it uh, simply puts it, it measures the net amount of companies, uh, number of companies that is actually advancing on a weekly basis. Our data is based on the uh, weekly weekly data. On a weekly basis, uh, meaning the advancer minus of the decliner, so net uh, advances. As the uh, S&P 500, 500 continues to climb in terms of price, we should also see the uh, cumulative advancer decliner moving up in tandem and in this case we still see that uh, market is healthy that the recent increase is price is not just led by a few strong company but it's across the index because we see that uh, the number of companies that's actually advancing um, is actually more than the decliners. The bottom chart actually shows us the percentage of members over 200 day moving average percentage over the 500 companies on average we do see that uh, as the market uh, advances we should see uh, the percentage hovering above or around the 75% mark. As of now, we, we, we still have a very clear indication that uh, the the market is still healthy. Uh, if we were to bring it back to a time period between the July uh, 2015 to the January 2016 where we witnessed that few uh, correction during that period of time, you could see that the members, uh, the, the percentage of members actually fell to the low of 25%. 
So this give us a quite a, a good indication as to if the market is healthy. So if if we see so it, uh, if we see any kind of uh, deterioration or you know um, disbursement within this kind of uh, index, meaning that you know we see price going up higher, but your cumulative advanced decliner is starting to decline. That's a cause of worry. We see that price is moving up higher, but we see your members of uh, the members of the index is actually above the 200 day moving average is actually getting lower that also is a cause of concern so as of now uh, we are we, are, we still do not see any form of weakness within the S&P market so the other indicator that we look at is actually the um, the 52 weeks high number of net net amount of companies actually at, at the 52 weeks high um, you could see that um, as market or as S&P continue to hit a 52 week high we expect or it is actually logical to see that there's more companies hitting their 52 weeks high so what we do here is we measure the net um, net numbers of companies uh, hitting a 52 week high meaning that those that are actually at a 52 week high minus away the one that's actually at a 52 weeks low so the net amount of uh, companies uh, on average what we observe is that uh, when S&P uh, hit their new 52 weeks high which is uh, doing more regularly and more frequently uh, now we we should see at least uh, you know the number of companies that's actually hitting 52 weeks high should be above uh, the 18 uh, uh, number so as of last week close as well we see that uh, as S&P makes new ground new higher ground we see that the company that uh, has made their individual own individual 52 weeks high is at actually 94 so um, that again signal to us that the, the market is still healthy even though it's at a higher valuation or at least there's no sign of weaknesses within the market so I'll bring your attention so then to evaluation is not actually um, it's really very expensive so what has been driving the, 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 the market itself is actually what we can consider the, the, the sentiment factor you know as long as we have uh, people that's willing uh, the, the animal spirit the feel-good factor um, and you know uh, the upcoming uh, tax tax reform as well as uh, deregulation of the, the financial sector all this would um, contribute to the feel good factor of the uh, US investors and uh, consume uh, the sentiment itself would bring a uh, price higher than you know where their actual valuation or fair valuation would be so by looking at the uh, survey such as the University of Michigan or the uh, CB consumer confidence we have a rough sensing of as and when um, there might be a potential uh, it, it does provide us with a potential indication uh, early indicators of any impending recession or market downturn so these are just two of the um, surveys or we call it um, soft data if you like uh, to to give us a leading indicator obviously we, we do have our Philip recession tracker that is being tracked by uh, Jeremy that give us more insight um, or hopefully and uh, give us an early indicator into what uh, we might possibly see in the future so as of now the conclusion is that yes valuation is high but um, in terms of the strength of the market we still that we still don't see any form of weakness um, the strength of the market is still there there's still depth and breadth in, with, uh, within the market and uh, we with that we come to the end of the presentation do feel free to if any question regarding um, any of the previous topic do feel free to ask
Do feel free to uh, give us any question regarding today's topic. Uh, in the meanwhile, you might want to check out our uh, research uh, website under which you can see on your screen right now is the stock BNB. Um, you can essentially get any of the our sector or our company reports from there uh, once you are a sign on member. Okay, we have a um, question on the tar high target price for DBS compared uh, as compared by OCBC research of 2740. I, I do not know what is the assumptions of OCBC research, but at least for my end, I can say it's because of the digital push by DBS. Um, and how do I know that? It's because they have um, come forward to describe 
in, in much fuller detail on the digital uh, strategies. If the other two banks were to discuss more in detail, probably uh, that could be reflected in the share price uh, target. Secondly is of course the uh, digital push to um, a digi bank franchise in India. So we are seeing very strong uh, macro favorable macro uh, favorable conditions uh, in India for the digi bank franchising. Thank you. Hi, right, there's a question on what are the stocks inside our, uh, what are the US stocks inside our Philips portfolio at the moment. Uh, okay, just to reiterate that our Philips for the US side, we are doing trading calls and it's not really collected in, I mean, it's informally collected in a portfolio, but not, uh, it's not truly, truly a, a constructed portfolio. By the moment, our open positions, uh, we have a couple, um, uh, Disney is one of them. Uh, AT and T is another. Um, we also have uh, open portfolio on uh, AAOI Apply Opto Electronics, and um, I think uh, we have one more that is. Give me a second. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so the open positions that we have at the moment are Walt Disney, GameStop Corporation, AT&T, as well as Apply Opto Electronics. Hi, it's Guanzi here. Um, there is a question asking about the outlook for oil and commodity sectors in 2018. So for oil and gas sector, our expected oil price, crude oil price to be traded uh, within the range of uh, above $60 per barrel. And the uh, upper bounder is uh, $75 per barrel. However, we think that um, the uh, upstream offshore, offshore oil fuel um, equipment provider as well as operator uh, will be uh, it will take some time for the uh, upstream sector to recover because um, uh, as of now the day rate is still um, at a lower um, level so for a uh, commodity sector because we have strong expectation for uh, inflation uh, in the global economy so we think that um, the commodity, commodity sector will perform um, positively uh, in this year. Thank you. Okay, since there are no more questions, uh, we'll end today's webinar here. Thank you very much for your attendance and uh, we hope to see you again next week.